we've got a lot of unfinished business here in the Big 12 that we want to make sure we take care of. Calling, doing this is my calling. Flow is so appalling. Make it work. Make it work. Shotgun snap. Under pressure. Big sack. Ooh, a go-to. Oh, what a play. Foster with the pick. One man to beat. And he will shake it. Forget about it. Bijan Robinson. 62 yards for a touchdown. Played the game and I'm still the same and I never change just to get a dip. Balling. Balling. I came from nothing to something like it's nothing. Yeah, you know I done it. That is no discussion. We just look at it as this year being an opportunity to prove everybody right and also prove the doubt is wrong. Say goodnight to this one, Roshan Johnson! Football is a bit of a puzzle, and I believe that we have the perfect person putting players, coaches, plays, calling it all in the right places so that the puzzle can fit perfectly. Welcome in to another edition of Rewind with a head coach, Coach Sark. I'm Lowell Galindo. Coach, on this show a week ago, we talked about needing the loss to hurt, to feel it inside, to really make some impact for this thing to get going. It looks like from the way you performed against Rice from the jump that that message got across. And I know it's still a long process, right. but how do you think they responded? Well, I think that was the beauty of it was the response, right? Uh, I thought the guys really last week had some real intent and purpose to their preparation, not only on the practice field, but in the meeting room, and then translated that to game day. Uh, I thought we played a physical brand of football. Uh, clearly, we ran the ball well. Uh, defense defended the end zone, right? And, yeah. and that's, that's the whole key. We had to almost remind them of, we're not just calling defenses to call them, we're calling them so that they don't get into the end zone. And I thought defending that and then finishing it with the shutout was, was a, kind of a, a great ending to the day. Uh, and it gave us a chance to really build on last week's preparation. The game was great. But now we can really you know, fall back on how did we prepare last week? What did you do individually? How did that work for you? And then build on it moving forward. Yeah, we saw the guys compete until the final whistle blew. It was a shutout, but it came down to the wire in terms of keeping them off the board. Casey Thompson gets his start. Rice comes out and they kick it short off the bat. You know, I, I thought our special teams played really well Saturday, and that was just a great example of being alert to kind of the oddball kickoff, Keaton Crawford getting on it and, uh, you know, giving us good field position to start. You wanted to get the perimeter guys like Xavier Worthy going, we'll get into that, but we got to bring up this stiff arm from Bijan. Yeah, fantastic play. I mean, this is a real weapon of his. Uh, he's a He's got kind of a complete package. He can make guys miss in the hole, but then the stiff arm right there, and then the speed to get to the edge. Speaking of speed, how about the speed for Casey to see what was going on and then make this run? Well, I think that's something that he does. You know, we, we always talk about winning on first down and um, you know the, the route combination wasn't there he tucked the ball goes and gets five yards and now we can play second and five football all right sets up a fourth down on the opening drive it really did um, you know we were in a position where we, we really knew we were going to go for it we had two downs um, you know we isolate worthy one-on-one -on -one in the slot uh, and this is what this kid brings right it's the ability to make people miss get vertical uh, you know, turns in a, you know, a little five-yard slant route into a, into a big-time gain on fourth down. Does not play like he's 160 pounds. Sure doesn't. He's a physical guy. Speaking of the physicality, Bijan with the touchdown. You know, the beauty of it, of Bijan, we just talked about the stiff arm. Then there he is making a guy miss, you know, right in the hole and then getting vertical for the touchdown. Makes a guy miss, carries him into the end zone. The man does everything. Defense comes back. And a three and out right off the yeah. bat. The, the key to the drill, we knew, was, was stopping the run game on early downs, uh, which we do. First down, stop. Second down, stop. Now we can force the third long scenario. Uh, you know, we can rush the passer a little bit more, force the quarterback off the spot, you know, and then get him on the ground. And now we're three and out. We're getting the ball back. And with Luke McCaffrey, that's something that the Rice coaching staff want to see him do a little bit more, get out of the pocket and scramble. So right back to it. Looks like Worthy is open. Thompson is hit. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I think we had Xavier Worthy for, for a big time touchdown. We get a little leaky in protection. They have a nice game on. Would love Casey there. He knows it just to eliminate that second hitch and just cut it loose and maybe get the ball up a little sooner. But uh, that's definitely a point of emphasis this week of cleaning that up. But this is what you did against Arkansas last week. You minimized damage with your defense. That's exactly right. Now they, they hit us with a pretty good little play right here off of the a fake jet sweep uh, and then the toss hitting in the A gap. But you know what? Remember the goal defend the end zone. And again, come back, first down stop right here in, in the red area, uh, which I thought was a, this guy, Sweat, had a really good game for us internally. 
come back again, another run. All right, really good stop. So again, now we're forcing a third and long. You know, I think it's like third and eight in the red area here. Uh, and we're able to get the stop again. Ball's on the perimeter. I mean, that is another point of emphasis for us this week is our tackling, right? We don't want to stop our feet. We want to run through these tackles. Uh, you know, we really felt good about this block right here. Uh, it's unfortunate we had the delay game because we might have had a scoop and score opportunity. But we come back, the pressure's there again. You see it again. I think we forced the kicker to kind of miss it left. So to that point, 11 red zone trips for opposing defenses, three touchdowns allowed on the season. That will get it done. And then we see Roshan, direct snap, longest run of his career. Yep, third and two. Uh, there's some really cool blocks on this play. Cade Brewer has a really nice block. Bijan has a really nice block. And those are some of the things that people don't recognize about those guys' game. You know, working for one another. Uh, and then just super excited for Roshan. He does so much for our team. Uh, special teams, leadership for him to get this run. It was a cool moment for, for, I think, the team for him. The young tight ends involved, too. Helm and Wiley had blocks to help set that up. Here, Ben Davis has a really nice recovery. Yeah, again, just trying to apply pressure on the quarterback. You know, everybody wants to look at the numbers of sacks, but it's about moving the quarterback off the spot. Here's another third down and eight. You know, Ovi gets in there, forces him off the spot. Now the quarterback drops his eyes. We get the sack. And then just a really cool effort right here by Keelan Robinson. And again, you know, you're mentioning guys that I keep talking about. They're really good runners, but they do more than just that. You know, we talked about Bijan blocking for Roshan, Roshan on teams, and now Keelan on the block punt. So that's a safety. You get the football back, and this is a drive that ensues on a third and six. There's Roshan. So two straight carries for 85 yards. Not bad. Yeah, it was a good day, on the, good day on the farm for him. You know, I think he had three carries for over 100 yards, so a pretty good day for him. All right, here's some more example of Worthy bringing the physicality, the way he finishes this run. Yep, again, and, and really good job by Marcus Washington on the perimeter. We really try to celebrate our perimeter blocking. Uh, and then again, not the biggest guy, doesn't just run out of bounds, drops his shoulder. Uh, and then again, just another example of trying to get him on the edge, let him utilize his speed and get vertical. You know, get a, get a gain of about 14, 15 yards on just a little jet sweep. And Washington was there on that play as well. And then Robinson caps it with a touchdown. Yep. Really good job inside blocking. Uh, great movement on the left side of the line. And then Brewer kind of sealing it for, for Bijan to pop through the middle. So next rice drive. They got 10 plays, but it doesn't go anywhere. 28 yards, and you stonewall them here. Yep, another first down run. Uh, great job at the point of attack. Good example right here, Deshaun Jameson. You know, corner coming in, in the backfield, making a tackle. And what I love is all of the white helmets around the ball. Oh, yeah. That, that's a cool sight. This is the best that I can recall the Texas secondary, especially the corners, tackling in a long, long time. And there's more white helmets around the football. Yep, and again, moving the quarterback off the spot, making him uncomfortable. I think it's good pressure by DeMarvion right there. Uh, and then, again, force another third and ten, getting around the quarterback, eventually getting the sack. But good job on the game by Ovi and DeMarvion. All right. And then right there, I think it was, uh, I can not see it was Jacoby Jones. But, again, just yeah. moving them off the spot, and then the other guys can rally to the ball. This is an impressive one-yard loss for Bijan. How he just keeps his going. Didn't, didn't block it uh, exactly how we how we drew it up. And sometimes that happens, but that's what the guy can do is kind of eliminate the negative plays. And it was good to have you know Jared Wiley back. You know, kind of somebody that kind of flew under the radar for us was not available in the Arkansas game. I thought he came out and played a nice game for us. Good pass here to get Whittington, but there's a hold, so it backs you up to a third and long. Yeah, the unfortunate hold didn't need to happen, uh, but this is a nice composure by Casey stepping back in the pocket on a third long and, and finding Calvante Dixon for a big conversion. 22 yards there for Calvante Dixon, and that one on the money. So Casey looking very comfortable on third down in this game. Yeah, I, I liked his composure in the pocket. I think he knew what we were trying to do. Um, and then again, just, just you know, really controlling the line of scrimmage, creating the running lanes. And I thought the runners were a little bit more decisive this week of putting a foot in the ground and getting vertical. There's some decisiveness. Really was. And, you know, again, just the versatility of his game, right? Now he's in the open field making a guy miss and then having the speed to, to accelerate and go score. And Rice really felt like they had the dudes on both lines to give you fits. Yeah. And... On the trenches on both sides, you won that matchup handily. Yeah, that is a great block right there by Junior uh, of really finishing his guy, which is a point of emphasis. Not just blocking my man, but finishing the block. Good pressure right there on the quarterback by Jacoby Jones. 
uh, forcing an errant throw again, just getting to the quarterback. Uh, and now the ball's on the perimeter, and this is going to be big this week. The, all these perimeter plays at Texas Tech oh, runs, yeah. very similar type play right there, rallying to the football, getting hats around the ball. All right, so that takes you to about three minutes left in the half and working to get into the end zone, and you will on this drive. Yeah, good completion to get Jordan Winnington involved. Um, we come back right here. We take a shot to Worthy again. Uh, you know, I, if I had a flag, I might have thrown it. We yeah. didn't get the P.I., but it, that nothing else. We have to take those shots down the field. Great example, third and three of Casey understanding the sticks and going to get in the first down. And back to that play, it should have been the P.I., but Worthy was there, right? He was. Yes, that was the throw. That That's what we wanted, exactly right. Now we got Roshan. 27 yards, and man, you even got Casey leading the way, saying, follow me, kid. Yeah, really good job, Casey. Another common theme is number 15, Marcus Washington, blocking downfield again, which added value. Sometimes receivers, everybody wants to look at how many catches they have, but what are they doing on the other plays? And that's something that Marcus has continually done for us, not only on offense, but he's been doing a really nice job on special teams for us as well. And we probably said his name as many as any receiver on this show because of what he does blocking. How about this play design? Yeah, we kind of set this up earlier. Uh, we had a little screen to uh, Bijan uh, that we ended up not throwing. Now we have kind of the and go off of it. And there's Jared Wiley for the touchdown. Good recognition by Casey. Second touchdown in the career of Jared Wiley, former high school quarterback looking good at tight end there. Defense comes back. Jaron Thompson with the forced fumble. Josh Thompson with the recovery. Yep, really good forced fumble. Great job by, uh, by Jaron Thompson with the left hand punching this ball out, which is something we're trying to emphasize and doing more of. But you see it right there with the left shoulder, left hand knocking that ball out. Uh, and then there's the fumble recovery. Sudden change gives us really good field position. And you've got 90 seconds to make something of it. And your offense does once again tight end involved here with Cade Brewer. Yep, we get the screen here to Cade, uh, able to get things started. Uh, the key to the drill and when you get in turnovers is what do you do with the ball once you create those turnovers in the short field. Uh, and I love what the guys did right here of you know, getting it started. We still had all three timeouts. We weren't in panic mode. Uh, we were able to get one first down. And then really nice play by Casey, you know, finding his outlet in Cade Brewer. Uh, we got to work on Brewer's, uh, you know, moves in the open field. Bijan was said, hey, man, you got you to gotta do a little better than that. Uh, but again, and now coming back to the back shoulder fade right here to Worthy. Really nice touch there from Casey Thompson. Yeah, good recognition, finding the one-on-one. -on -one, uh, good trust in a true freshman right there and, and Xavier making the play. And at this point, 44 nothing in the first half. I mean, you do everything that you possibly could do in a game in a situation like this. Well, I, you know, again, we wanted to start fast and, and kind of, you know, get that bad taste out of our mouth, and I thought we did it. Another great example of just the corner play. Josh Thompson coming up, being physical on the perimeter, um, which is something that we, we've been emphasizing. Okay, we come back, second long run. Baron Sorrell. Yes, time. yeah, Baron Sorrell had a nice game. Um, you know, not perfect as a young player, but working on it. Then we third down. Another third down stop for us right there. Ovi's there, Jacoby Jones is there, and you do get the stop on third and five. Yep, yep. So, Ball, right back to your offense. Here's Bijan with five yards on first down. Yep, just a little bit of a wide zone. Again, you know, as much as we were trying to get the ball on the perimeter in the passing game this past week, trying to do a little bit more in the run game, I thought it was effective. Here's another example of getting the ball on the perimeter to Bijan on just kind of a simple, you know, flat path, uh, pull read by Casey and getting him the ball on the edge. Just trying to find ways to get, you know, the playmakers the ball in space. And then Keelan, time for him to get up and go for 65 yards. Yeah, really well done, well done up front by the offensive line. Nice job by Josh Moore. Good job by Xavier Worthy. And then we see the speed. Uh, that Keelan possesses and that burst to, uh, you know, at the second level. So career long for him, 65 yards, showing that burst on the special teams with the pump block yeah. and seeing it here as well, finding that seam and the rest, it's all Keelan Robinson. Yeah, but you know, I, again, to reiterate, the blocking was really well done to give him the crease to trust his read and then to go get it. All right, so next Rice drive, you start off with Brendan Schooler coming up, forcing the fumble. And you'll yep, see that right contact there. Right. Bang. Great hit on the ball. Uh, really unfortunate we don't end up with that one. I mean, I think so many times when the ball falls forward after a fumble, that's generally where the defense is to recover it. 
Uh, good effort by their kid to, to stay on the ball. Uh, so a couple, I think we could have had a couple other turnovers in the game, but uh, it was a great job, nice hit, knocking the ball out. Now, how about the quarterback situation? The fact that they're down to the number three and four quarterbacks, you had really no film off. Yeah, I mean, we were just banking on they were going to be kind of gamers and athletic, and uh, that's kind of what they were. They were scrappy guys, and again, just trying to win on first and second down like we've been doing forcing some of these third and longer type scenarios and then getting to the ball. Nice play right there by Prince Dorba to get us off the field. Yeah, so a lot of names that we haven't had the chance to call and see got opportunities in the second half. On the fourth and three, they pumped it away and Worthy with a really nice 20 yard return. Yeah. I think he got a little, drifted a little too deep. Uh, preferably we wouldn't we wouldn't uh, receive that ball. But again, getting to the edge, showing the speed, and then the physicality of finishing the run. Hudson now enters the game. Sorry yeah. to cut you off. No, though. you're good. How significant are these snaps for Hudson? They're big, you know, and again, that's why we didn't want to play that first drive where it was just run, run, run. We wanted to give him some opportunities to throw the ball. It was good to get Josh Moore involved on the edge. You see the, the, the burst there. So, you know, trying to build confidence for a lot of guys, and I think that was a, this was a great example of that right there. And you see the smile on his face. His body language was much the same as Casey's body language sure. when he was coming off the bench. Well, I think these guys respect one another. They respect the job that both of them are doing. And uh, when they got their opportunities, they wanted to perform well. I, I you know, I want to highlight that with this Calvante Dixon on this ball to Kai Money. Um, because th this perimeter blocking thing is critical to our success. For him to block that corner the way he did was, was really big. Um, and then we, we get ourselves into, now we're into our fourth back here with Jonathan Brooks and to watch and see what he could do for his first action of playing. Um, Hudson again getting to the edge. All right, nice job by their, by their safety, kind of jumping this route right here. Would love, would love Dixie to step into the catch, but nice play by them. We get ourselves to a third and long. We end up running the ball right here and a really good run by, by Jonathan Brooks again. And now you got the bush push on the very next play. Helps Hudson get that first down. Yeah, this was our first sneak uh, since I've been here. Uh, and, you know, I've been a relative, you know, I, I believe in the quarterback sneak. It's a lot easier to go, you know, get a yard when you don't go backwards first. And so we, we utilize that right there. And then here's, here's Brooks again of just kind of getting to the edge. Really well blocked play again with guys like, Juan Davis on the field, you know, Hayden Connor, Tope Amata. I mean, a lot of that second tier group kind of stepping in and, and blocking it well, and Brooks finding the end zone. Here's another young guy, freshman from DeSoto, Byron Murphy, has two really good plays back to back. Yes, he has. And he has steadily gotten better. Of all these young guys up front, he's probably played the most, and you're seeing the growth in his game uh, from week one now all the way into week three, pushing the pocket right there and then ultimately get in the sack. Like he's got grown man strength yes, being sure a true does. freshman. He really does, and that's, it. that's his best attribute and his effort. You know, he's a high effort, high motor guy. And at this point, the game's in hand as we go to the fourth quarter, but really no point in time playing a lot of young guys that are inexperienced, does it look like there's a letdown? No, not at all. We, we did not want that to happen. I think our coaches did a really good job of emphasizing it. And also the younger players stepping in and trying to maximize their opportunity and the veteran players being there for the younger players to, uh, to support them in, in what they were doing. All right, so now this drive, we get to talk a lot about young Jonathan Brooks and young offensive linemen. Starting off with Brooks, comes from a tiny school in Texas where he absolutely dominated. What do you see from him now under the bright light? Well, first of all, great block by 81 Juan Davis, another true yep. freshman. But then Brooks, what you see is he's he's a bigger back. He's not small. Uh, he uses his weapons, his stiff arm and different things to break tackles. And then he obviously has the speed to separate. Looks like he's fighting on every play. Yeah, no, he's a physical guy. Uh, good job with his ball security, which was something he needed to work on during training camp. He's done that. Um, and again, just finishing runs, you know, and, and playing the plays. Uh, and I don't think the moment was too big for him, which, which was obviously very good. Yeah, if that's running back number four, you are developing a stable here at yeah, Austin. Yeah, that's, that's the key, you know. I, I think that you never have enough of those guys that can run the football for you in our style of offense, and uh, I think we found another one. So Gabe Watson now comes in, former Division II star, and he's running behind a very young offensive line. What did you see from Watson and these young guys up front? Well, what I saw was moments and flashes of them doing some really nice things. And then 
moments when there was a lack of communication and not being on the same page and not blocking things the way we want to get blocked. But sometimes you don't find that out until they have to get in and go do it. And so uh, everybody's got a job. Everybody you know, wants to do their job. And sometimes you need the experience to figure out, oh, wow, this happened a little quicker than I thought it was going to be uh, than in practice. But really good job by Gabe of all night on this whole drive of running north and south and getting vertical with the ball. And this is something you also mimic in the second half of your practices, the ability to get even more physical and wear down opponents, wear down the clock. Exactly right. That that was the plan. You know, obviously, you know, we got a lot of respect for Coach Bloomgren and, and Rice, and, the, and by no my, by no means was there any intent to try to rub in the score of the game or do anything like that. But uh, it was a nice drive by those guys to work the ball down the field. Now I love this. This is the game within the game. There's pride on the line here, even if the game not on the line, that zero on the board. Well, they, we wanted the shutout. I, I think everybody on our sidelines wanted it. I know the defensive players wanted it. And I mean, I haven't had a few starters, I think, ask if they could go back, <laughs> they could go back in to preserve it. And, and it was, no, we're going we're gonna to ride with the guys that are out there. And a really good red zone stop by these guys. I mean, just, just hanging in there, fighting. Wasn't all perfect. Weren't all in the right spots the whole time. But just as a great effort here by Derek Harris getting the sack and uh, solidifying the win. And that is a true freshman making the play right there. Zeros on the clock, zeros on the board as this program gets its first shutout since 2017. Marcus Tuiasa so far, one of the greats to play the quarterback spots and, and a guy that you coached a long time with. So some familiar faces out there for this Texas team as you take down Rice 58 to nothing. I want to I want to get into something that we talked about in our meeting on Friday and that I brought up before we actually went on air because I think it's a great point that fans at home need to hear to understand the level of excellence that you were trying to establish here. You made the point that if you get upset on a Saturday when you don't do something as good as you can, that you also have to have that same standard when it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, during the week in practice. Yeah, I think, you know, I think one thing that happens, you know, when there's when there's a scoreboard on Saturday and, you know, the game doesn't go the way we want and everybody's upset when they get in the locker room, which we had to, we had to deal with and we had to own at Arkansas. But when there was a mistake made in the game Saturday or mistakes made in that game, that were the same mistakes that occurred on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you can't wait till Saturday to get upset at the mistake. Whether it was your own mistake or maybe another guy next to you that you know he's capable of doing it better, we need to correct and be demanding of that mistake on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If not, when that same mistake occurs on Saturday and then you're upset, you know, who, who are you upset at? You're upset at yourself or you upset at the guy that, that didn't do it right? So that's why we really try to hold ourselves accountable to the way we practice and uh, the approach that we have and the intent in which we do things during practice so that we can perform when game day rolls around. I want to read you a couple of stats here and just get your reaction. So for your offense, 14 red zone trips so far this season, 13 touchdowns. The only one that wasn't a touchdown when you're trying to wind down the clock at the end of this game. 92.9% .9 touchdown percentage in the red zone. That's the best in the ball subdivision. Your defense, 12 drives, three touchdowns allowed, 25% touchdown percentage that's the fifth best in the bowl subdivision what do those stats mean to you well we you know we really pride ourselves on what we think is a winning formula for playing football and this you know in the red area um th those are those are huge plays in that whether it's third down or scoring touchdowns because a third down play in the red area is really the one time in football that that's a four point play mm -hmm. you get a stop on third down in the red area most people kick a field goal well, you just, you just really got four points, right? Instead of them getting seven, they got four. Conversely, for us offensively, you know, we really try to pride ourselves on our execution there. We have a, our own almost separate game plan for the red area when we get there um, because we know the value in those points when we get there. And, um, you know, we're not the team that uh, tries to run as many plays as we can. And, and then over time, you just get so many plays, you end up scoring. We try to play complementary football, protect our defense, sometimes even shorten the game. Well, with doing that, if you only run about 60 plays, you got to be really efficient. And you need to be efficient on third down. You need to be efficient in the red area. And I think that's a, just a sign of the work we've put in in training camp, competing against one another on offense and defense, and then applying it now in game. So it's a, 
it's been a real strength of ours and it's going to need to be moving forward. Yeah, Big 12 play is coming up, but things are clicking in the right direction. Offense, big part of that. We talked about the red zone efficiency. Also, you got a quarterback that doesn't matter if he's handing it off or throwing the rock. Like the offense is just scoring points with him on the field. We've got our offensive breakdowns coming up. And we'll also go to the blue turf up in Boise to check in on the rest of the Big 12. Start getting set for the opener in conference play against Texas Tech coming up. This weekend's opponent, Texas Tech, trying to go 3-0 and by taking down Florida International. And Florida International got the early lead, but Marquise Waters helps take that lead away. The INT back all the way. And with the pick six, Waters helps Texas Tech tie the game at seven. Second quarter now, Red Raiders with the lead by seven. EJ Wilson Jr. somehow finds himself wide open, slips one tackle, and goes 69 yards for the touchdown. And the game is tied off at 14. Remember, early season against Stephen F. Austin, Red Raiders had some problems. But Tyler Shuck gets the Red Raiders back. Hello, Trey Cleveland. Catches the ball, stays in bounds. All righty. Red Raiders up 28-14. Shuck looking for more over the middle to Mason Tharp. Tharp gets into the end zone, into the end zone, makes a really nice adjustment on the grab. And it's all Texas Tech after that. They take down FIU 54-21. They are 3-0 to Boise as Boise State taking on Oklahoma State. This is Hank Bachmeyer, Davis Cutter, 28 yards, and the Broncos up 10-0. But on the very next play from scrimmage, Jalen Warren gets Oklahoma State back into the game. 75 yards. No one touches the dude. Oklahoma State makes it a three-point game. Boise State in the red zone. Cyrus Habibi Likio, five-yard touchdown. Boise State up 17 to seven. Third and 17 late in the second quarter. This is key. Sanders throwing off the back foot, a lot of contact, but Boise State is called for pass interference, even though you see a little shove there from Brennan Presley. This was huge, it bailed him out on third and long and leads to this. Warren with the touchdown. And Oklahoma State makes it 20 to 14. Malcolm Rodriguez now making the play. This guy's been at it forever for Oklahoma State. Gets the strip. Pokes get it back in business at the 21-yard line. Sanders, third and goal on the keep little stiff arm, and Oklahoma State takes the lead 21-20. Another key situation. Four minutes left in the fourth. Warren is hit. J.L. Skinner recovers and returns it for the touchdown. However, they review the play. They rule it is a fumble, but they blow the play dead. Said it was whistled dead, couldn't advance it, so no touchdown. Instead, Boise State needs this to take the lead, and Jason Taylor, the second, gets just enough of it to send this offline, and Oklahoma State, three and oh, barely, after they win by one. Great game here in Morgantown as the Mountaineers trying to knock off number 15 Virginia Tech. Good start. Letty Brown into the open field. 80 yards. One of the most electric players in the Big 12 getting it done. And the Mountaineers take the 7-0 lead. Jarrett Daggy looking for more. Clean pocket to Bryce Ford Wheaton. Double coverage and makes the catch. And the Mountaineers extend the lead 14-0. Well, the Hokies would come back. Braxton Burmeister. The rocket over the middle. What a catch by Tavion Robinson. Going up over the defender. And it's a one-score game. Mountaineers working it. Daigie. Sam James. And Mountaineers are up 21-7. to They're thinking we're running away with this. But Virginia Tech decides we're making this a game. Raheem Blackshear. Right side. Finding the sideline. Finding the end zone. 20-yard score in Virginia Tech in this, but down 27 to 14. Four minutes left, Burmeister looking for somebody, has the check down, Jalen Holston. Holston's wide open, nice cut inside, slips a couple of tackles, not the best defensive effort, and Virginia Tech makes it a one score game, 27-21. They do not, do not go for the onside, instead they kick it to West Virginia, and Davey is picked off in a screen pass on third down. Virginia Tech gets this all the way down to the four-yard line. On fourth and goal, Burmeister rolling, 
trying to find a hokey in the end zone, and it's broken up. West Virginia holds on. They get the top 25 upset, taking down the Hokies 27-21. Good game here. Lincoln Riley, OU, taking on rival Nebraska. Spencer Rattler rolling to Jeremiah Hall and his 14-3 Boomer Sooner early on. Later in the third, Adrian Martinez. This is what he does best, keeping it on the ground into the end zone, and it's a five-point game. But on the next extra point attempt that follows that touchdown, it's blocked. Pat Fields comes up with it in the end zone and goes all the way back. So this is a huge momentum shift when Nebraska was just getting back into the game, and it also puts two more points on the board for Oklahoma. Later in the fourth, Kennedy Brooks into the end zone, and it's 23 to nine, but this game saved the best for last. You will see a lot of interceptions in your lifetime. I don't know if you will see many more than this one right here by DJ Grant. Just watch it. That is ridiculous. Stick him into the chest. Spencer Rattler was like, whoa, what just happened? That was everybody's reaction. K-State now 3-0 after taking down Nevada, 38-17. Baylor opens up conference, thumping Kansas. And Iowa State now 2-1 after demolishing UNLV, 48-3. Coming up on Rewind, Sark is back. We focus on the Texas defense that pitched a shutout and also got the ball on the ground. Defensive breakdowns coming up on Rewind. The Texas Offensive Player of the Game, Casey Thompson, making his first career start. Goes 15 of 18 for 164 yards through the year and two touchdowns. Since the Alamo Bowl, he's led 18 drives. Texas has scored 14 touchdowns in those drives. All right, Coach, getting into our offensive breakdowns now. You told me going into the game it was a pretty simple kind of goal for Casey Thompson, at quarterback, score points regardless how you got the points, take care of the football. Did both pretty well. Here's how you get points on the board, finding your guys like Xavier Worthy. Yeah, I think it's, you know, recognizing the coverage, you know, trusting your reads, and then, you know, ultimately delivering a, a catchable ball, which he does here. And then when that happens, now you're putting that receiver in, in, a, in a spot to where he can catch and run with it for you. Uh, the ball's on point. And then utilizing, you know, Xavier's athleticism. Obviously, he's a, he's a very fast kid. He's slippery, uh, tough, competitive, all the right attributes. And obviously has a knack for getting open. He does that, and Thompson puts it in the perfect spot. Yep, another one here. Uh, press coverage, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Casey utilizes the kind of the back shoulder throw right here to Xavier. I think Xavier did a nice job of just kind of getting a little subtle separation there at the top of the route right when the ball was delivered. And still, I mean, it's a guy playing his third college game, just scratching the surface for what Xavier Worthy can be. Let's go to Roshan now. Kyle Flood had a great comment about him coming into this game, that Roshan doesn't care whether he's carrying the football or blocking. He just wants to be out there and produce. If I could have 11 Roshan Johnson, that we would be even a better football team. And uh, to see him get this play out of the Wildcat there in, in a short yard situation was was really cool moment. Um, you know, and then he only showed the speed, as physical he is. I love the block by Brewer right there and then Bijan right there to kind of spring it. And then Roshan ultimately running through three tackles for the big play. Does it help with his background being a high school quarterback in terms of lining up in that way? No, I think it does. There's a level of comfort, right? It, it is different receiving the ball from the center, but I think there's a level of comfort for him doing that. Um, you know, I feel like we could add something tomorrow in him being in Wildcat and be very comfortable in doing it. All right, let's go on to the other running backs that also had great performances. Basically, if you're handed the football, you did really, really well in this game. So we're going to start off here with B. John Robinson. Yeah, just a really well block play. I, I want you to watch the right guard 75 right there, Junior. Uh, really just displaces the nose tackle, creates a big void in the A gap. And then if we can get this guy to the second level like this, uh, that's that's good for Texas. You know, he's tough to get down when he's in the open field. He's proven that throughout his career. And then here's another great example of Keelan Robinson. Uh, the front side of this line, uh, really good double teams. Great job, Jared Wiley. Great job, Josh Moore. You see the crease right there. And then there's Keelan's speed and acceleration in the second level to go do the same thing. Wow, the acceleration and 
You know, that's something that you've you've mentioned. It's not just the acceleration, but like for his size, there's a lot more physicality that also comes in that package. And we see him on special teams put that all together to get this pump block. It looks like he shot out of a cannon on this play. Yeah, he is really he is flying off the ball. I think that that goes back to the belief and the trust in the scheme and the coaches to say, this is what's going to happen if we do it right. You can see Keelan trust it and really come off the edge. And he is digging for the block point, uses the great technique to block it in front of the punter. Um, and it's unfortunate the ball went up out of the back of the end zone, you know, but uh, you know, just the execution of it. And then just seeing, knowing he did it the right way, he couldn't wait to get to the sidelines to get back with his teammates. So you've got dangerous returners back there on the punt return. What does it mean now to have that combination on tape, to have the returners and for opponents to start seeing that and have to game plan and figure that dynamic. Well, I, ideally, I think people want to cover us. Um, we have to put pressure on them that you better block us up front before you go cover. And if they're a second or slow later getting out to go cover our returners, that's going to create more space for our returners. So to now put pressure on opponents knowing we will rush the punter, you got to be you got to be a little bit more cognizant of just you know setting and going to go cover the kick. So now if we got to force them to block, now we're giving Deshaun Jameson and Xavier Worthy some more space to go create some big returns. Let's get into the defense now. And there's always talk about the pass rush. How do you get that? How do you get more sacks? Probably more opportunities coming up in the Big 12, the teams that are going to pass a little bit more. Well, let's focus on how Ovi gets home on this play. Uh, yeah, so we're running a game right here with Alfred Collins, Ovi, and really DeMarvion, a uh, three-man game. You know, and as much of pass rush is, is, we all love sacks and want sacks, but are we affecting the quarterback? Is he dropping his eyes? Are we forcing errant throws? Are we forcing him to scramble? And uh, Ovi did that there. You're going to see him here do it again uh, with, uh, with Ovi and Jacoby Jones. Again, just affecting the quarterback as, as much as we can. Um, to get him uncomfortable, and that the you know, uncomfortable quarterbacks are, are not a good place to be, whether it's us or the other team. That that's not that's not a good place for any quarterback. Is when you feel the pass rush. Yeah. Uh, because when you start to feel it, your eyes have a tendency to drop. Now you're maybe missing some reads, or you're make you're forcing some errant throws. Sound like a guy that's been. Baby, I've been down that road <laughs> once or twice. I've been uncomfortable days. before, and it's not good. <laughs> Keep those quarterbacks clean and feeling good. All right, we're gonna wrap up now talking about takeaways and uh, a big stop late and this is Jaron Thompson forcing the fumble out with Josh Thompson recovering. Yeah, just uh, you know, I don't I don't love the run fit uh, but again, there's the initial wrap up right here by DeMarvion and then Jaron Thompson's second man in. That's when a lot of fumbles occur is on the second man in right there, getting the ball knocked out and then really good recover by Josh Thompson. And then Harris with the sack to end the game. Yeah, really cool play for Harris. Just an effort play, right? You know, beating the tackle around the edge. I think if he could do it all over again, he'd probably try to get a strip sack and knock this ball out. But for the, his first sack of his career, uh, cool moment for him. And I think his teammates, you know, you're seeing his teammates getting around him. That's the kind of stuff I love to see. And that's healthy too, right? Saying, hey man, you made a good play. Let's make an even better That's play. exactly right, and that's that's all part of it, right? We're all trying to create a new standard for ourselves so we can create a new standard for our team, and so we're always trying to find ways to improve, and I think he's, next time around, he may knock that ball loose. Let's hear from DeMarvion Overshone. Here he is after the game with Alex Chappell. Well, a 58 to nothing final here. What can you say just about this bounce back victory? It's always a good day in the office when, you know, the other team got zero points. I feel like we took it upon ourselves as a defense, you know, giving up 40 last week to come out here and, you know, not try to give up not one point. So uh, going into practice with that intent, with that mindset that we wasn't trying to let them in the end zone at all uh, was emphasized real big this week and we was able to get the job done. How much, you know, when you, you bring up that kind of intensity, how, that was something you all were focused on this week. When you see these types of results, how much does that mean to you all? Uh, it just shows that when we put our mind to uh, what we actually want to do and, you know, we got a bunch of sore losers in here and that's a, a good thing. We hate losing and we had that taste in our mouth, that sour taste all week from that loss from uh, Arkansas. So coming back being able to get back on the field this Saturday and do what we've done. I feel like everybody, you know, going to enjoy that. But come tomorrow, you know, we're going to put that same intent that we did last week so we can come back when it all matters starting next week. 
How did you make sure that that loss to Arkansas didn't fester with this team? Uh, just making sure, you know, uh, like Coach said, we couldn't let that one loss turn into two. So, you know, it was the past, and we knew we was going to have to live with that for the rest of our lives. So, we know, we couldn't let it turn into two losses. So coming into practice every day, knowing, like, we don't want that feeling again. So, uh, you know, coming into practice, like I said earlier, with that intent that we don't like that taste in our mouth, and we was able to get the job done. So you all host Texas Tech next week. What can you take from this win as you get ready for Big 12 action? A lot of momentum. Uh, you know, any game we put allow zero points is a good day. So basically coming off uh, last week and being able to do this week, us seeing what we're capable of doing uh, when we put that amount of intensity and intent at practice, uh, now that it all counts, you know, we, we all ready to go. Practice games is out the way. And, you know, we ready for this run we're about to take. B. John Robinson is now over 1,000 yards for his career. More yards coming. Plus, we'll hear from the sophomore standout coming up next on Rewind with Coach Sark. <laughs> Defensive player of the game. A lot to choose from with Texas pitch in the shutout. But we got to go with Ovia Gofu. Third game is a long one. The Notre Dame transfer comes up with five tackles. One and a half for loss. A sack and a PBU. A complete performance from Ovi Agofu. Next up, the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Looking at the tell of the tape, both teams scoring a lot of points. Red Raiders at 40 points per game. Longhorns at 39. Big edge goes to Texas on the ground at 245 rushing yards. When you demolish Rice like the Longhorns did, it's going to make that number look really good. Bijan Robinson did a lot of that. Here he is with Alex Chappell. Over 400 rushing yards for the running backs tonight. What can you say about what you all put together offensively? Man, first I just want to say it's a blessing. Uh, you know, it's just cool to, you know, go play for God and see what he can do with, you know, our unit. But, you know, just how hard we work and practice and to see, you know, how that overcomes, you know, in the game. And that 400 yard, I told Coach Jerry, and it's going to be, you know, one of those games. And I just told him, you know, we just got to keep doing it throughout the season. But just seeing that and to see, like, all my guys, you know, just keep working in and get those kind of yards, you know, it's just awesome to see. When you bring up the hard work that you all are putting in at practice, what is it like when you have a night like this and you see these types of results? It just shows, you know, what we put in is just what we come out with. And, you know, I, I got to give credit to the offensive line as well because they made so many big holes and, you know, all five guys up front, you know, it, it wouldn't happen without them. So, you know, that offensive line, you know, made the holes and we just capitalized off of them and, and made, you know, stuff happen downfield. So I got to give credit to them and then, you know, we'll just do the rest. When the offense is firing on all cylinders the way that it was tonight, how much are you all just feeding off of each other? Man, we're feeding off. I mean, I, me and Casey talked in the beginning of the game, and we're just saying, you know, when we get rolling, uh, it's just hard to stop us. And, you know, it just showed, you know, from last year, from the Colorado game, you know, what we can do, you know, and how dangerous we can be. So we seem to keep honing in and, and keep, you know, understanding that there's a new challenge and new focus, you know, every week. And it's going to be the, you know, same results if we just, you know, execute right and do everything, you know, correct. Bijan, you bring up talking with Casey. So Casey Thompson making his first start tonight. Yep. But what are your thoughts on what, what he did for you all and just getting this, finally getting this yep. opportunity? Man, you know, Casey, you know, works harder than, you know, a lot of everybody. You know, he, he works so hard. He, you know, he puts in the work. You know, he, I knew he was ready for the, the opportunity before it even, you know, happened for him. So, you know, I'm just, it's just awesome to see, you know, him, you know, come out and, you know, be comfortable and, you know, get, you know, help us get the win um, because, you know, it starts with a, you know, good leader at quarterback. And, you know, he showed that tonight. And, you know, we just got to keep going with him and, and just keep rolling. Saturday, Texas enters conference play and they go up against a familiar rival. Texas Tech Red Raiders. Coach Sark with a lot of respect for Matt Wells. We'll get into the matchup when we return on Rewind. The win star, winning moments. Texas with a complete effort, shutting out Rice. Texas gets its first shutout since doing the same against San Jose State in 2017. Also won this game by 58 points. That's the largest margin of victory for the Longhorns since 2005. That was a pretty good year. Lifetime Longhorns now. Malcolm Roach continues to make plays, punishing Sam Darnold here. Coming off of the interception. First Texas defensive lineman with a pick in the NFL since Corey Redding in 2015. Malcolm Roach. Continuing to make plays. Texas game day is coming up bright and early, 9 a.m. Central Time. 
on Saturday, Texas Game Day final will follow Texas and Texas Tech as the Longhorns move into conference play. All right, Coach, next step, getting into conference play. You've got Texas Tech coming to town. Matt Wells, the team is 3-0, and and you've already seen the improvement from this team with Wells getting into a system now, having some time to do it his way. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Coach Wells. You know, he did a great job at Utah State in building that program, uh, came to Tech, and you can see it year three, they've really kind of got it right. You know, they've got it right offensively of what they're trying to do. They've got it right defensively. Uh, they have a veteran team. Um, they've got a lot of transfers on their team. And they're playing a fast, physical brand of football right now. And they're, and they're doing it with confidence. And you, and you see it in their play. And they've really even improved as this season's gone on from week one to week two to week three. So uh, we've got our hands full against a good football team Saturday. Now this is part of the conference journey, a conference that you don't want to go on alone. 11 a.m., you need, you want the student body, the Texas fan base there in full force for that bright and early kick. Well, there's no doubt. You know, DKR is a huge home field advantage for us, uh, but it's as only as good as that home field advantage of how many how many fans are in those seats. And so I, I recognize the 11 a.m. Ki kick and it's an early kick. Uh, I just, you know, really want everybody in their seats for that opening kickoff. I know our players feel it. We got all day Saturday after that, man. Yeah. So. Maybe, maybe tuck it in a little earlier Friday night, you know, get up early, get down to Bevo Boulevard there, you know, uh, have a good time, and then uh, get this thing cranked up in DKR at 11 a.m. Hey, we'll be good. We'll be there at 9 a.m. That's when Texas game day starts, so we'll be ready for that 11 a.m. kick. Coach Sark, appreciate it as always. Yeah, well. All right, we'll see you guys next week on Rewind with Coach Sark.